Hello, my name is Mike Aben, and welcome to my KSP campaign. At the conclusion of the last episode, well, we had, I think, our first complete mission failure. A software glitch. Not a software glitch that Squad is responsible for, but one that I am responsible for that I introduced through my use of KOS, Kerbal Operating System. But that software glitch prevented the Spider-1 from achieving its low curb in orbit, and it had a fiery re-entry and a crash back into the surface, and that mission was pretty much a complete failure. Well, obviously, since then, I have fixed that little bug. I talked about it last episode, so I'm not going to talk about it again. But clearly, I do want to get back into and retry out my Ascent script and try and get that. So we'll be going back very shortly to the uh, Spider-1. I want to kind of tweak it a little bit. I'm not very happy with it either. Uh, as well, what else do we got happening? Well, we got still a lot of test testing part testing contracts to do right here. Um, most of these are part testing contracts because I need to raise the funds. My goal being, maybe this will happen this episode, maybe not, but my goal is to get up to 337,500 curb bucks. Uh, I guess I'm, yeah, more than halfway there, so moving in the right direction so I can upgrade the VAB and remove that 30 part count limitation, which is certainly affecting my rockets. There is, however, a rocket that I have completely been forgetting about, but it is one that is designed for some high atmospheric... not you... you, the Striker MR3. Uh, I've flown it a couple of times. It does high atmospheric science collecting for me. Um, I think it's perfectly fine exactly the way it is. You can land it in different biomes nearby and it can collect some more science from those areas as well. So, yeah, we'll push out another one of these, but I don't think I need to modify that at all. What I do need to modify, I think, is the spider. Let's take a look at the spider. Here we go. The spider. Now, this thing has... Uh, let's see. You know, one of the things I've been running into is my part count limitation. This is exactly at 30 parts. And that's part of what's limiting it. Let's take off these smart parts. They are not necessary. That frees up two more parts. Uh, I also find this thing just... Uh, there's not much further for that Spacely engine to go. I find that it is... It lacks commitment <laughs> in the upper part of the atmosphere. Um, and that's part of the issues, I think, why... I didn't achieve my orbit as well. Well, that end, that engine not firing was <laughs> to circularize. So I went back to the lighter Cogswell, along with a pair of spiders for control authority, as the Cogswell doesn't have any vectoring. And with this additional thrust, I was able to add on an additional Oscar C fuel can onto the upper stage. And now with this beefed up booster, I was no longer reliant on the payload engine during ascent. And the price? Well, I had to start reducing parts on the payload, so out went the batteries, no more solar. Uh, but I did find the Geiger counter experiment inside the State Putnik, and there should be enough electric charge just in the State Putnik to be able to run this experiment once. Also, with the better booster, I was able to take out almost all of the fuel in the payload, so that now almost all the work will be done by the booster, which really is the way that it should be. And I ended up reducing parts so much that I was able to add on a 0.625 meter fairing that I have available thanks to a contract that I have. So hopefully this thing will actually be able to perform a contract as well as collect me some science. You know, I think this will do her. Oh, the other thing I want to do, it's been wobbling on the pad and I think the source of said wobble are because it's sitting on these control surfaces and the control surfaces are likely moving and probably the easiest way I have is probably taking these decouplers and just making sure that this stage is below, just below. That should probably help. Yeah. I don't want to move the fins because I don't want the center of lift to come up any higher. Like while I'm thinking about it, let's uh, decrease the priority on this fuel flow so that tank will be draining last. 
Okay, now with a redesigned booster, I want to do one last one thing here. Is I've been saving my old boosters and I've actually been calculating, not calculating so much, but figuring out what their max payload will be. So this is a new, uh, I'm calling it the Striker 1R3 because it's a core one striker, and then two radial strikers, and then a space and then dash spacely booster. So what I want to do is figure out what the payload is of this new configuration because I think it's a little bit bigger, better. And oh, I do have room for oh, oh now forget the smart parts. <laughs> so let's save this. We're going to use the reroute tool. I'll show you the simple way in which I do this. So with the reroute tool, we're going to make this decoupler the root tool that allows us to take that off. And now what I can do is I can simply take a fuel can. Uh, this one will likely be, well, let's, let's start with the big, this guy. We'll stick him on top. And that brings our Delta V quite a ways down. But all I need to do now is decrease this mass of this until the Delta V is around 3600. We'll call that what's needed to get into a low carbon orbit. There we go, that's pretty good. And now all I gotta do is reroute this one more time. I was getting into calculating and all this stuff, but this is way, 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 way simpler, is make now that fuel can the root part, take that off, and now that, all I gotta do is look down here, and that has a mass of 176 kilograms, so we'll call this to say it has, we'll round down, 170 kilograms for its, uh, its, uh, low carbon orbit payload mass. Okay, so we gotta do some more rerouting. We will reroute back to the decoupler. Take that off. Put you back on. And then a little bit more rerouting to get this back to what it was originally, which is of course there. Throw away that. Get back to sub-assemblies. I'm trying to just build these standard boosters Chuck that into there. And. Oh, I gotta make a new one. So cancel. Because like I don't think you can edit that. So this is the. Doo -doo -doo, the striker. One dash R2 dash spacely. Booster. And it has payload of 170 kilograms, pretty tiny, <laughs> to LKO. And hopefully over time, what I'll end up doing, yep, overwrite the other one. Oh, if you just call it the same thing, it just overwrites it. Yep, yeah, okay, cool. Cool. Okay, that's how you do it. All right. Um, let's test this thing. Or that made all the difference. No more wobbling at all. So it was just, yeah. Okay, that that sh that in of itself should help. So I'm gonna have to do the staging. So I do have to pay attention now. I can't just go get myself a sandwich while this thing ascends. <laughs> That's my ultimate goal. Is to uh, create a mission, start it running. And then leave the room. <laughs> now that I'll, I'll be done. That would be awesome. Okay, should be getting the program enter. Altitude lock disengaged. Program ended. Okay, so that's that. It ascended way more with what I'm used to. Alright, we can lose the fairings. Oh, let's turn down the... Yeah, we'll fix that too. Don't need that to be so... Aggressive. That's an orbit. That is an orbit. And he's still got 33 meters per second left. Beautiful. Alright. So, let's end the simulation. 
We're going to exit here. We're going to chuck a couple of rockets into our building queue. So from the plans here and the VAB. Oh, I still called it the Spider-1. So we're going to go with the uh, sort of old Soviet-style uh, mission numbering systems in that when one fails, we just pretend it never happened. So this is the Spider-1. There was never another Spider-1. <laughs> And we want to have a Striker MR3 as well. Okay, so that's cool. We got one that's not being built yet because I don't have a bay there, but that's all right. It'll take a day for the ugly test vehicle. We have... Oh, no, the Juno's going to be ready before that. So let's... Yeah. First thing i got to remember to do, to do a goose sample right now. So we are going to observe goo on the surface. There it goes. It's depleted. <gasps> I have to replace the goo. Oh, what the heck? Well, that's new. Okay, so let's let's talk about that. There's something I've learned. Okay, so let uh, I'm let's make sure of this. So let's look at our data. Our data is empty. We got nothing. So when I went to open the goo. It simply said depleted. And if you look here, you'll see from the scrapyard mod that this goo has been previously used. So clearly what I need to do is I need to put another fresh goo on there every time. So no goo for you. That really, really stinks. Um, oh yes, I know what we got. We do have some contracts we can perform. We can, here it is, barnstorm the island airfield hangars. We'll have other opportunities to do the goo. Fly an airplane to 2,500 meters. Is that an altitude? It sure as heck is. And these are, of course, from the giving aircraft purpose mod. All right, so that is that first requirement. Complete, right? Yeah, just got to land somewhere safely now. Obviously, it shouldn't be an issue. There. Pump up the speed a little bit. And we got to barnstorm the two hangars. Now, I have no idea what constitutes barnstorming. Hopefully, you don't have to get too close because I am not that brilliant of a pilot. Let me go first. Go here. Probably not close enough. That was definitely not close enough. Barnstorming, please. Uh, let's do it faster. Maybe that's the issue, is I'm just being too much of a wimp. Oh, for goodness sakes, what is barnstorming? They can't mean going through them. Do they mean going through them? If that's what they mean, I'm definitely, most certainly, taking advantage of quick saving. It might mean going through them. Can I go through them? I don't mean going through them. Okay, I think they mean going through them. So we are going to quick save. I am not. Can I just drive through? <laughs> Oh my gosh, I think they do need going through them. I'm gonna die! I didn't die! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh my god! Oh, I am no cupcake lander. <laughs> Scared the hell out of me. All right, I think. Which one did I do? <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna quick save again. I don't care. I'm gonna quick save. This is stupid. I think I did the one closest to the tower. I hope I did the one closest.
No! Okay, that's why I could say. I don't care. <laughs> okay, we'll try that again. I gotta, I gotta more carefully line this up. Let me hit that hill. Down. Down this way. Pitch down. Get under. Up. Ballad! No! Uh, count is sort of, but can I land land anywhere safely? I'm assuming that means don't die, Valentina. Can I get you? Oh my God! This is, I might not die. I might not die. Val might not die. No, just on the ending. Oh, it's the don't destroy the aircraft. Okay. Easy. Why was it so easy that time? <laughs> okay. oh my God. Let's, let's go home. I wonder if you could have just driven through there. <laughs> like land on the runway and just... just <laughs> that would be funny. Well, I mean, at least one thing that Kerbal Academy thing contract did is got me to do something I would otherwise probably never do. Valentina, you hot dog, you. Whoa, what's with the auto steering here? Alright, so... Oh, this one does require you to land on the runway. So there we go. Contracts are complete. And after re-kitting out the Juno to get it ready for its next mission, which included, of course, replacing that goo canister so I can do another goo sample it was a couple of days for the next mission another ugly test vehicle which you can see here i've significantly oofed up and the sole purpose of this vehicle is to finally test the spacely engine i need to get over 580 meters per second in velocity while remaining below eight kilometers this is a contract i think this is my third shot at this contract so it was getting kind of annoyed with it i probably have overbuilt this vehicle a bit but i wanted to make sure i finally banged this one off and with this mission finally in the can it was time for this vehicle to be modified a bit for a go at another previously failed contract, and we'll be seeing that in a little while. But with it into the building queue, well, our next mission was the redesigned spot. Wait a minute, what do I mean redesigned? This, of course, is the very first Spider One. There was never another Spider One, and we will never speak of this again. Although I did pick up a contract to test the fairing, this mission is really about redeeming my Ascent script, which contained a bug that I talked about enough last episode. I don't need to speak of it anymore, I don't think. This is our simplified mission. We're just going for a 75 kilometer circular equatorial orbit. And to its credit, the script performed perfectly this time. But in this game, there are always new ways to fail. There we go. Attitude locked, disengaged. Program ended. Okay, and we can now let's pop our fairings. Oh, ah. okay. That's I hate when that happens. Okay, okay, and of course the force of all that. Should get my radiation scan ready. Once we're in space, we can do a radiation scan and, oh my gosh. I gotta get that antenna. Antenna. Extend the antenna. All right. Keep track of electricity. Oh, this is not gonna be fun at all. Okay, because it's out of control. I gotta get control of it, it's what I gotta do. So, go. Oh, this is, this is terrible. I I can't 
believe this is happening to me! Again! Okay, I'm getting some control back. How much fuel am I using? I am, I am getting control. I'm back on. Come on, come on. Okay, punch it. I'm falling now. Oh my god, that was so brutal. There's no way. I cannot believe this, not again! <laughs> Why? Why? No! Oh my gosh! Oh, what drives me crazy is those fairings separated cleanly upon simulation. And then uh, I had to adjust them. Because I went, oh, they, they came off with too much violence. I need to turn down the force and put on the clamshells. And ah! God dang it. Got a radiation scan we can do <laughs> for whatever that's worth how long is that's gonna take eight minutes we're not gonna be in space for eight minutes that's for sure oh my gosh I am I am this is jinxed oh my gosh I thought I was playing it safe and look it happens to me again Uh, we're going to stick... Wait, maybe I should stop calling it. Maybe it's the name that's jinxed. Maybe I shouldn't call it the spider one. No, I'm not a superstitious person. This thing should fly absolutely fine. As long as it doesn't do something stupid. Another spider one into the VAB. I can't... I can't end it on that, can I? <laughs> what else do we have happening? We're going to keep going. I guess the spider's net. Oh no, there's a Juno. We have a Juno ready. Do I have a pilot ready? I do not have a pilot ready. How long until I have a pilot ready? Oh, Jeb's ready in an hour. Alright, Jeb. We're not finishing on that abysmal failure. <laughs> that is not acceptable. And with a fresh goo canister, Jeb was able to collect 1.6 science from the surface of Kerbin, as well as polish off three contracts, all part testing, all trivial, but they did move me closer to unlocking my first tier 4 tech node, and more importantly, had me closing in on the funds that I require in order to upgrade the VAB. It was then on to the Striker MR3, a pure science mission, no contracts associated with this at all. It was using a ballistic script in order to get itself into the high atmosphere. I'm aiming for coming down in the highlands that are northwest of the KSC. The highlands is a biome I've yet to touch anything down in, so this should collect a reasonable amount of science. And indeed it did, it pushed me over the 45 science threshold for my first tier 4 node. And I went with enhanced survivability. Lots of good options, but I went with this one mostly because of the heat shields. And this should help me get that recover something from orbit contract finished off. I then wanted to upgrade the Striker MR3. Uh, this vessel sort of coming towards the end of what it usefully can do. And I do have a number of new parts available. I'm really tempted to unlock the cube probe body here. But I want to focus just on, I want to unlock the, upgrade the VAB. So I don't want to spend any money on new parts at this point. So all I did is I replaced the three radial mallets with three radial strikers. And this gives me something that should be able to go suborbital again, unlocking more opportunities for hopefully relatively cheap science. It was shortly after this that the R&R mod cleared Val to fly the Juno once again. This time just to test two parts splashed down off the, off the coast of the KSC. 
You know, it was interesting. I always assumed that Kerbal Construction's times feature to recover the active vehicle required you to be on the runway, but actually I was able to recover the active vehicle right from here. Kind of interesting. Uh, kind of makes me wonder how far I really can push this. But anyway, after picking up two more contracts after this one, I actually did have enough to upgrade the VAB, and oh my gosh, was I tempted, but it really would have left me pretty tight for fun, so you know what, it's time for just one more mission. And this should hopefully give me just a little bit more of a buffer so I can upgrade that VAB. I think that solves a lot of my problems. I'll redesign a lot of vessels at that point. That's full steam ahead. And launch. All right, so what I got? Contracts, contracts, contracts. All right, no, no, <laughs> no. Uh, this is one, I want to watch this, I'll explain that one in a second, but this is the real one here, testing the radial. Because I think this thing, if I point it straight up, has the ability to go suborbital, and probably has the ability to get to these kind of altitudes, I think. I think it might have enough delta V. So let's see, throttle up, and stay, yeah, and I'm just going to go straight up. That's it, straight up, straight up, straight up. That's where the fun is, straight up, straight up. And we got to test the these big ass decouplers. <laughs> they must have a ton of drag with them. I got to test those uh, when my altitude gets to 24 kilometers. My speed has to be between no more than 690. Clearly getting more than 10 won't be an issue. Okay, I'm gonna stage some some boosters in a moment. So, okay, 24. And I don't have the ability to throttle down, but I do have this is spacely on there on that stage. So I do have some ability to slow down once this booster has been boosted. Track of my apoapsis too. Like that, and we're going. Okay. Um, I need to slow it here. Just this might not be the best test of how high this thing can go because I got to slow down until I've tested. There. Go. Oh, full throttle now. <laughs> All right. So that's that contract. I have to make sure to get that contract. But what I'm looking at there, this is, I'm in, uh, my apoapsis is in space. Will that get up over 220? That is the question. Oh, I'm also significantly, uh, if I rebuild this, I should put some batteries on it because I am significantly electrically challenged. Right now, the batteries are being charged. Um, by this engine. Oh, we got this. We're way, look at that. Over 300 kilometers are apoapsis. And we are out of fuel. Should maybe save some of that fuel. All right, doesn't matter. Let's arm the parachutes while we, let, let, okay, let's watch our electricity here because I got a feeling, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Okay, we are nice and high, but let's arm these parachutes. So hopefully they won't kill us on our way down. And maybe we can recover this. I'm getting warnings now about electricity. <laughs> All right. Oh, we are we are trucking. Okay, th th this I don't need anymore because I'm not fulfilling that contract. But that one contract, how much money do I have now? 381, I think I can finally afford to upgrade that VAB. That's what this is about. Oh, oh, things are exploding. My parachutes are still here, I think. Maybe. Yes, they are. I don't know what that... Oh, probably fins. Yeah, there are fins. 
be nice to recover this. I have no control over it anymore. I've lost my signal because I have no electricity. All right! Nice. Okay, so we can recover that one. All right. And that gives us 382,000 curb bucks, and especially with the fact that um, I'm going to be able to pick up another contract, get another advance. I am comfortable now in upgrading the vehicle assembly building. Of course, <laughs> Kerbal construction time. Uh, where is it? Your vehicle assembly building is going to take almost 14 days to complete. But once that's complete, oh, I, I got a high enough part count. I don't, I don't think I'll worry about part count for a while. <laughs> so <laughs> that will be a good thing. Allow me to put together something a little bit more sophisticated, get some more stuff happening. That's all going to have to be, obviously, for some future episodes, including, including, don't forget the Spider-1, my, my, shh, my third Spider-1. But we're not talking about that. It's ready in just un over four hours. That'll clearly be towards the beginning of next episode. But in the meantime, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.